You aligned yourself with the governor during the stimulus uh, battle, a, a battle that he lost. Uh, the governor had said that if we took this money, which the state will end up doing, uh, the state would be in worse shape in two years. Uh, if that is true and if you win, uh, then what is your plan for, for jobs and, and plans for public schools at, at that point, if that is true and we'll be in a worse off situation? Well, I think it's a loaded question. First, you have to look at the stimulus. The stimulus was a money tree that everybody hoped was going to fill gaps and holes that we were feeling in our economy. We are now finding through school boards and other local governments that it is not filling the holes that they thought it was going to fill. It's making them grow government by adding new programs that they didn't currently have. That's going to put us in more of a hole two years from now. We need to understand that sometimes, just like we do in businesses, you have to go through the burn, prioritize where your spending should be, and not expect the federal government to bail you out every time you have a low point. When I came into the State House back in 2005, we had a $4 billion budget. When I came in 2000 2006, we had a $5 billion budget. When I came in 2007, we had a $6 billion budget. We grew a billion dollars a year, yet we can't tell you where that money went. Those are the things we need to be paying attention to is that money was spent irresponsibly in the beginning. We need to start spending money responsibly now, not wait for the next stimulus package to come along. DC's already talking about the next stimulus package because this one didn't do everything they thought it was going to do. We need to understand as a state and as a country, no stimulus package is going to get us out of a hole. What will get us out of a hole is when we take care of the small businesses that we have in the state, when we understand that in order to bring other companies into this state, we have to take care of the ones that we already have. Jobs will happen when we allow small businesses to have cash flows and profit margins so that they can hire more people and invest back in our state. Will, will that be true, though? Will In two years from now, w w with this stimulus money, will the state be in a worse situation than it is right now? Did well, I think you can go ahead and see that now. I've talked to two different school districts that have already said this isn't filling the hole that we thought it was going to fill. They're now requiring us to grow programs that we don't currently have. What we need to understand is, instead of that, from an education standpoint, rather than looking for stimulus to out our students. We need to look at the fact that we're spending $12,000 per student. It's having to go through a thousand people through the Department of Education in 85 school districts before it ever touches a teacher in a classroom. The teachers and the students of this state deserve better. We continue to be last in the country on education. We continue to only graduate one out of every two students in four years. It is obvious that money is not the problem. What we need to be doing is reforming our education funding formula because we're not funding students equally across the state. We're we're only funding them based on where they happen to live and where the property tax base is high. Let's talk about let's talk about jobs. Uh, several of the candidates that we've already had here on Newswatch, uh, uh, their platform is jobs. Absolutely. Um, is, is that your platform? And and what is your focus on jobs? Are there specific industries that you feel could come into the state and, and do well? I think it's two sides. One, you have to take care of the businesses that you already have in the state. That is through an overhaul of tax reform. We have to make a tax system that's fair for everyone. When you create cash flow and when you create profit profit margins for small businesses, they will be able to hire more people. That in turn creates more jobs and that helps our economy. When we go and we look at economic development, there's a couple of things we need to do. The governor needs to be able to go and recruit those companies with the leadership of the House, with the leadership of the Senate, with the leaders of the technical schools, because technical schools are key in this state, with CEOs from other companies, and we need to say, we need you. But what we also do is we turn around and say, when you get to South Carolina, this is where we want you to go, and we want your employees to go into our schools and mentor our students. Most of those companies require community programs. When we turn around and say, we want you to go into Dillon, we want you to go into Allendale. We're going to make sure there's a technical school there to skill your workers, and we want your workers to turn around and work within our schools to mentor our kids. This is more of a cultural business plan for the entire state. You can't just patch certain areas. We don't just want companies coming to Greenville or to Charleston or to Columbia. We want to make sure they're going to areas that really need their help and that we can turn around and partner with. Okay, we're going we're gonna to take a break okay. and we're going to come back and we'll have more with Nikki Haley. Welcome back to News Watch. Right now we're talking to Representative Nikki Haley about her candidacy for governor. And we actually had an opportunity to sit down with you uh, back a few months ago when you announced that you were, you were running. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what you had to say. 
Well, this is what I'll tell you. I am the daughter of two people that came here from India that never let us forget every day what a blessing it was to live in this country. I am the sister of a man who served in Desert Storm, and I remember what it was like to wonder if he was going to come home. I'm the wife of a husband who I watch walk out the door every day in a military uniform who loves his job. And I'm the mother of two children that I drop off to public schools every day, and I wonder what they're going to be when they grow up. You mentioned that you have two children who, who go to public schools. I do. And, um, you know, your party, is, some in your party are known for supporting public school vouchers. How, how do you feel about, about that issue? You know, I think we need to look at education reform all the way around. I've said that I think it's very important that we reform the education funding formula. But I want to go back to my experiences of why I think education reform is so important. I grew up in Bamberg, which is a rural district where everyone took care of everyone else. We didn't know what we didn't have. I lived in Orangeburg where they spent so much time on discipline that they didn't always have the time they needed to teach. And now I live in Lexington where every public school is like a private one. You can walk into some of the schools in Lexington and every classroom has a small board, which is a computer instead of a chalkboard. You walk into some of the schools like Allendale, they wouldn't know what a smart board is. It's, there's something very wrong when we don't have equitable funding in this state for all children. So I do want to see the fact that we reform the funding formula. I do want us to look at choices for kids. You know, in preschool, when I was deciding child care for my children, I decided the child care that was best for my child based on their personalities. In higher ed, we're the envy of the world when it comes to college education, and we choose where is best for our children to go to college. Why would we not do that in the most important years between K through 12? Those are the years where we're losing our kids, and those are the years we need to make sure the parents are most involved, and we're doing as much as we can to make sure that they have the choices they need and the reforms that we need so that South Carolina can be on top of education and not have to struggle with the challenges of being on the bottom. So you're willing to, to look at least look at that the private school vouchers or, or, or oh absolutely or, I think we look at every educational reform when you turn around and you look at where we are as a state to not look at an education reform would be an injustice to the people of this state when we are only graduating one out of every two children in four years one out of every two you can't turn your back on anything. We've got to look at what other states have done. Georgia has passed school choice. Um, they did it for children with disabilities. They had such a high success rate from it that they turned around and made it universal. What we need to do is look at other states, look at what has made them thrive, and see what we're not doing. I think to turn around and say we are for or against something blindly is an injustice to the people of the state, and I'll never do that. In business, you look at everything, and you try and see what works best for the people that you serve. This is very much the same thing for government. We have to go in with new ideas, be creative, be fresh, be energetic and say we're going to turn around and show the country what we can look like when we're on top. We just heard you uh, speaking about your parents. You're, yes. you're, you're the daughter of two, two immigrants, an Indian American, and right. you, you have two children yourself and a husband in the military. How do you feel your story will resonate with South Carolina voters. You know, I'm very much like South Carolina. I was born and raised in a town where you couldn't think about doing something wrong without someone already calling and telling your mom. <laughs> you know, it's you learn responsibility and accountability early. You know, when you are the daughter of immigrant parents, you understand what it means to be in a country that allows you the opportunities that you have. My mother was um, a judge in India but she wasn't allowed to practice as a judge because in India at that time you couldn't. Now I'm a female and I'm running for governor. Look at the differences in that. We are so blessed that I have the opportunity to do that. My parents taught us that the best way to appreciate your blessings is to give back. I'm a person of service. My husband is in the military. My brother fought in Desert Storm. I've got two children in public schools. I want the quality of life in this state to be good and I want people to know what it feels like to trust their government. I want them to know what it's like to feel good about something. I don't want all the news that we've had and the national headlines be what defines us. I want South Carolina to feel good about who we are, where we live, and what we're made of. And well, we're going to do that. Well, we've been, we've been talking in the commercial breaks about how interesting and exciting this race will be. And uh, we wish you the best of luck ahead. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And coming up, what does the governor's scandal mean for the 2010 governor's election? We'll speak with a political expert about the indications coming up next.